Hey everyone, welcome to another session of Sarazzle Dazzle Physics. In today's session, guys, we're going to be talking about the resistance of a wire against temperature. So, put down today's title, it's going to be the resistance of a wire against temperature. And before we get going, guys, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button to keep my channel going and keep my content as free as possible. Okay, so let's get straight into it. So, let's say we give you a wire. Okay, so here it is guys, so here is your wire over here, so this is my wire, you know, you've seen loads of wires before I'm sure. What happens if you were to increase the temperature of the wire? The question is, what would happen to the resistance of the wire? Try and sketch the graph yourself. So if we heat up this wire, let's so say we apply some heat, what do you think happens to the resistance of the wire as temperature increases? And look at this graph over here, I've got resistance on the y-axis measured in ohms, on the x-axis I've got the temperature, notice my symbol for temperature is theta in degrees Celsius, so R is going to be the resistance, and we have uh, theta is going to be equal to the temperature, the temperature over here. Okay, well hopefully you have an idea that as the temperature increases, the resistance increases. But the key thing is this, is it directly proportional? Is it like this? Do you think that at zero degrees Celsius, the resistance is zero? Do you think that? Well, hopefully you have an idea that, obviously, imagine right now the temperature in the room is zero degrees Celsius, the resistance wouldn't actually be zero. There are still some vibrations within the actual uh, wire itself. So if you were to draw this wire out, uh, what's inside it, don't forget, uh, it's a piece of metal, and obviously there are metal ions inside here. There's metal ions inside. And obviously the metal ions are vibrating and obviously that's causing the resistance. So if you are an electron over here and you're trying to get through, the vibration of the metal ions provides you with the resistance here. Okay, so hopefully we have an idea that even at zero degrees Celsius, there is still going to be some resistance. So the graph looks like this. Okay, so here we go. So the graph looks like this. Right, now there's a relationship between the resistance of the wire and the temperature. We're going to give you the formula right now. The resistance at any temperature, so we're going to call that R theta. So that's R theta is going to be resistance at temperature theta. At temperature theta will be equal to R naught, which is the resistance at zero degrees. So R naught is equal to resistance at zero degrees. And then, uh, th and then open bracket 1 plus alpha theta and we've already defined what theta is over here the only new quantity which you haven't seen before is going to be this alpha here this alpha is going to be called the temperature coefficient of resistance so alpha is going to be the temperature coefficient of resistance Okay, so R theta is equal to R naught, open bracket, 1 plus alpha theta here. So every single metal will have its own value for the temperature coefficient of resistance. Okay, so from here everyone, all I'm going to do is the following. I'm just going to open out the bracket, you'll see why in a minute, just follow with me. So R theta will be equal to R naught plus R naught alpha theta over here. Very good. Okay, so some of you might be wondering, well, what are the units of the temperature coefficient of resistance, the alpha over here? Well, simply you just plug the units in on both sides of this equation and the units of both sides of the equation will balance out because every equation is dimensionless. So if I was to put the units in, so resistance is measured in ohms, so square bracket for units, ohms is equal to ohms on this side, plus, don't forget this is ohms as well, ohms over here. And then uh, temperature coefficient, we don't know the units of that. And theta is going to be degrees Celsius over here, degrees Celsius. Now think about it, you've got ohms on this side, so these two are going to be have to be ohms. So the unit that you'd have to put here is going to be what? What would you need to put here? You need to get rid of the degree Celsius, so therefore I would uh, scrap this from here. And we put per degree Celsius. So 1 over degree Celsius, so 1 over degrees Celsius, that goes here. And those are my units for alpha, those are my units for alpha. So alpha is measured in degrees Celsius to the minus one, degrees Celsius to the minus one, obviously because I'll bring that to the top here. And look, now that balances out because this is ohms, this is ohms, this is ohms, and obviously they all balance out on either side. Okay, so we've discussed the units of the temperature coefficient of resistance, but now let's talk about how on earth can I work it out? How on earth can I work it out? 
using a graphical method. How can I work it out using a graphical method? Right, in order to do this, guys, we've got to use our skill of relating the physics equation to the equation of a straight line. We have done it a couple of times so far, and hopefully you are familiar with that skill. So we've got this graph over here. We're gonna try and link it to this equation and the equation of the straight line in order to find the temperature coefficient of resistance alpha here. Okay, right, so let's do this. Okay, so the task is the following. We've got the physics equation. We're gonna try and link it to this graph and the equation of a straight line. Well, first of all, I'm gonna just times it and get rid of the brackets. So R at theta is equal to R naught plus alpha r naught theta. Don't forget what they all stand for. R theta is the resistance at that temperature, whatever you're looking at. R naught is going to be the resistance at zero degrees, which is temperature zero. Alpha is the temperature coefficient of resistance, and R naught once again. And theta is just going to be the temperature here. Right, so now we've got to be able to link this equation to the equation of a straight line. So I'm gonna write down y is equal to mx plus c. Then I'm going to rearrange this equation. R theta is now equal to, I'm just going to shift this forward, you'll see why in a minute, R, R naught, theta plus R naught. Yes, I'll just move that there and move that there. And now look, the reason why, because I can link them easily. So look, on the y-axis, yes, I've got R theta, which is true, the resistance at any temperature. That's why I've got this in this way. And look, on my x-axis, I've got theta, which is true over here. And look, we can clearly see that the gradient of this graph will be equal to the temperature coefficient of resistance times by R0. And where is R0? Well, R0 is the y-intercept. So this value here, the resistance at this value is going to be R0 over here. And we just said that the gradient of this line, so the delta y over delta x, would simply be equal to alpha R0. Therefore, if you want to work out the temperature coefficient from this graph, alpha will be equal to the gradient of your graph, whatever the gradient of the graph, so I put that as gradient, in a I'll put that in the square, divided by r naught, which is your y-intercept over here. If you want to, I can write it out as the gradient of the graph divided by the y-intercept. And that will be your value of the temperature coefficient of resistance. Easy stuff. So now look, guys, we're able to do it. The gradient divided by the y-intercept will actually be the temperature coefficient of resistance here. Okay, and obviously this is the graphical method, so don't forget you need to obviously have the practical to be able to go with it. So the practical looks like this. Okay, so here is the practical setup to look at the resistance versus the temperature, yes? R versus theta over here. And look at the setup. So we've got in series, we've got a power supply over here. And, we and look, this is the coil of wire. That's my best diagram of the coil of wire. So I'll label that if you'd want over here. So this is, this is the coil of wire over here. And look, we've placed it into water. And that's the easiest way I can heat it up. And we've got the voltmeter connected around just the coil, everyone, yes? So we're gonna measure the voltage across the coil. Yes, we're gonna measure the current. And obviously we're gonna increase the temperature and see what happens. Um, oh, I forgot this. I need the thermometer inside here. So this is my thermometer over here. So this is my thermometer. So here's my thermometer as well. So here's my thermometer here. Okay, so our table of results will be the following. So we are going to obviously change the temperature. So you heat it up and you measure the temperature using the thermometer. So theta is our first column uh, in degrees Celsius. Yes, my units degrees Celsius. I'm going to get values of the voltage, uh, which is volts, measured in volts. Then get values of the current, which is going to be in amps. And then finally, uh, the derived unit, which we're gonna look at is going to be the resistance in ohms, yes? So I take the voltage divided by the current and I will get my resistance value over here. Then I'm gonna plot resistance versus temperature. So on this axis over here, look carefully, I'm gonna plot the resistance versus temperature. Resistance versus temperature. And obviously it obtains the graph that we looked at earlier on, which is this graph over here and which we will end up with the following bit, which we said earlier, r theta is equal to alpha r naught theta plus r naught, and then relating it to the equation of a straight line, y is equal to m x plus c, and then very easily now, on the y-axis you've got r theta, which is true, look, the resistance at any temperature theta, x-axis you've got the temperature, which is going to be here, you can see that the gradient of the line is going to be alpha r naught and the y-intercept is going to be 
R0 over here. So yes, if somebody asks you to work at the temperature coefficient of resistance of that wire, which is this coil over here, you're simply going to calculate the gradient because we know that the gradient is equal to alpha R0. Therefore, the temperature coefficient of resistance, which is alpha, that will be equal to your gradient divided by R0. And obviously, you can get R0 from your graph over here. That, this value here is R0 because that's a temperature at zero degrees over here. Easy stuff here. And my unit, don't forget, alpha, the unit is going to be degree Celsius minus one. Those are my units, everyone. So that's my unit as well, which I've put over here. And that's it for another session of Surrounds Dazzle Physics. Make sure you hit the like, subscribe button to keep my channel going. And good luck in your studies. Ciao, ciao, and goodbye.